you, Senator Booker. Thank you, um, Chairman Flake. Uh, and thank you, Ambassador Sullivan. Um, it is uh, great to have an opportunity to talk with you and uh, to the next panel about uh, the transition underway in Zimbabwe and what the future might hold. As uh, Senator Flake referenced, we uh, met with uh, former President Mugabe in February 2016, and like many, I was very pleased to see him uh, go after 37 brutal years. But um, I think it's critical that uh, the people of Zimbabwe not see one dictator replaced by another. Uh, and so uh, I, for one, am reluctant to see us take any steps uh, to lighten or relieve sanctions or other international restrictions on uh, loans or partnership uh, until we see, as you suggested in your testimony, concrete steps uh, by the administration of Emerson and Nagagwa and uh, any successors. So walk me through three things, if you would. What are the key milestones for us to watch for? Um, to get a sense of um, um, Emerson Nangagwa's uh, capacity and willingness to enter significant reforms? Thank you, Senator. On As far as um, governance goes and respect for human rights, uh, we would like to see uh, immediate um, uh, implementation of freedom of expression uh, that has been lacking for decades in Zimbabwe, freedom of assembly. Uh, we are looking also for um, a free and responsible media, including social media, um, the preparations for the elections, that I, as I mentioned, um, anti-corruption. Uh, I believe they've given a 90-day window for people to return ill-gotten gains as an amnesty. Uh, will that happen? Will um, um, corruption be uh, pursued in an impartial way, uh, in an apolitical way? Um, how will things progress in terms of rule of law and due process? Uh, those are on the, on the um, governance side. On the economic side, um, the country is crumbling under crushing debt. Um, we also have a very low doing business environment there that is a deterrent. So we'd like to see a, an improved investment climate. Um, since investors vote with their feet, they are watching very closely uh, because there are potential opportunities there. Um, but investors want to be able to repatriate their, their earnings. Right. Uh, and again, the rule of law and a level playing field will be very important in the economic sphere as well. Thank in you. addition, in the uh, security sector, uh, we would like to see the security sector earn the trust of the citizens, and that would include police reforms. I was struck that the budget request for this year for Zimbabwe, if I understood correctly, uh, dropped 50, almost $60 million from the previous year and included no request for democracy and governance uh, programs. Uh, it's my expectation that there might be some reprogramming uh, request or some increased willingness to partner with the robust civil society and free press that you referenced. What sort of role do you imagine that uh, USAID and the State Department um, should play uh, in the run-up to free and fair elections if we are genuinely making progress? Um, all of our influence is not necessarily tied up with the dollar figure, um, but to address that point, we do have some um, flexibility with some regional funds uh, that we could target if we saw an opportunity that looked viable there. Um, I think that our, our diplomats have a wonderful opportunity to use the bully pulpit uh, to coordinate with like-minded uh, international partners, uh, and also to continue engaging with civil society organizations with whom um, we, we may not be currently giving assistance, but with whom we've cultivated relationships over the years. Because fundamentally, this will be about the people of Zimbabwe, uh, and we want to support their aspirations for a country that can reach its full potential. Last question. Um, so China has long had an active role uh, in Zimbabwe during the liberation struggle and to now. What do you see as um, their influence in Zimbabwe compared to the United States? What do you see as their trajectory um, in Zimbabwe? And what do you think are their interests or their priorities compared to ours? Um, I agree with you that this is essentially up to the people of Zimbabwe and the actions that will determine their future will be taken by Zimbabweans. But um, it seems to me that this is a moment for the United States to show a principled leadership, um, active engagement and interest, but I'm wondering what uh, another major um, influencer in this country uh, has in mind for their um, short-term agenda as well. Well, as throughout the continent, uh, China is very interested in um, resource uh, acquisition and uh, in their interactions with the various host governments uh, have 
taken a very hands-off approach in terms of what they might consider uh, undue influence or uh, foreign interference. Um, so we don't expect there will be any change in terms of uh, China's approach, um, but I think we have a window for the U.S. to engage in a way we haven't been able to engage um, that will involve U.S. businesses, which of course are private and we can't compel them to, to engage the way um, others perhaps have an opportunity with the state-owned enterprises uh, to engage. Well, thank you, Ambassador Sullivan. Um, thank you, Chairman Flake. I, I think you'll see significant and sustained interest from members of this subcommittee and other committees of the Congress um, as we try and encourage and support a movement towards a genuinely open and democratic society in Zimbabwe. Thank you.